Hey, what's up everyone? Vegetarian Zombie here, and welcome back to another episode in Beginning C Sharp with Unity. Now, throughout this course, you've learned a ton of new things, and you should feel quite comfortable with the C Sharp language. While there's still plenty to learn, you should know enough C Sharp to get you started following beginner Unity tutorials. There's just one last topic in this course, and it's critical for you to understand, and that is collections. Now, before we dive in, as mentioned, my name is Vegetarian Zombie. I run this YouTube channel as well as Jesner.com. If you enjoy these videos and you want to see more, feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Basically, thank you for being here. I hope these videos help you. Now, before we cover collections, you first need to know how to get generic or really understand generic syntax. So what is generics? Okay, let's say you had a method that adds two types together. Here you use it for ints, in shorts, floats, and doubles. You basically want this method to take in a number type, add them together, and return it. For this to work, right now you would have to manually create this method for each different type. You'd have to make one for a float, make one for a double, make one for an int, make one for a uint, and so on. So there's a lot of repeating, a lot of redundant code going on. Generics allow you to define a method that takes in a type so that instead of maintaining multiple copies of the same method, you use generics to maintain just one method. Now, granted, this syntax is bonkers. In this example, the T stands for type. Writing generic methods or classes is well beyond the scope of this course. Seriously, if you are breaking into a sweat looking at that code, don't worry about it. When you first start out, you'll be using lots of generic methods. Later down the road, you'll write your own generic code, but that's an intermediate skill. Now, when calling generics, you put the type in the angled brackets. So with this, you can see this unity code that calls the get component method. This allows us to get a component off the current game object. We simply pass in the type we're looking for, and Unity uses this type to find it. If we didn't use generics, it would return a generic component, and you would need to cast that yourself. And of course, that may be open to errors. And of course, you may cast it to the wrong type and cause your program to crash. So using generic syntax is clunky, but at the same time, it's really helpful for us. The syntax gets even clunkier when you have nested generics. Here is a list of string lists. In this case, it's just preferred to use the var keyword instead of dealing with all these angled brackets. You mostly use generics with collection types. These are types that hold other types, like the array. That's, the array is a very basic collection type that's actually used to build more advanced collection types. We're going to cover three of them the list, the dictionary, and the set. This isn't meant to be a comprehensive overview, but rather a tasting. As you grow as a C-sharp programmer, you should really start looking into collection types. They save you lots of time. Okay, here we have Visual Studio Code open, and we're going to do everything inside of show message. Delete everything except your two fighters. We'll be using them later. Okay, the first collection type is a list. A list is like an array. Let's create a simple string list. This is our first list. Now, if you're experiencing a compile error, you might not have imported the list itself. So if you scroll up to the top of your screen, you'll see all your using statements. You want to add using system.collections.generic. There is a system.collections, but we don't use those. Okay, now go back to your code. Uh, if you did see an error, that error should go away at this point. Now notice our list. We use those angled brackets to let us know what type of list we're working with. In this case, our list can only accept string objects. To do so, we use the add method.
Now we can also loop through lists. Save, switch back to Unity, run the game. Press the button and you get your names. You can also remove names as well. Back in Visual Studio Code, do the following. When we remove an item from the list, the remove method returns a true or false value. This lets you know if the remove was successful or not. Now let's add an int. We get an error because our list can only accept strings. This goes away if we turn our string list into an object list. Never do this. It, working with mixed arrays is very dangerous and error prone that can cause your game to crash. Okay, the next collection is a dictionary. A dictionary has two properties, a key and a value. You look up the item with the key and you get a value. Think of like a dictionary when you look up a word and you get the definition. Now the key and the value are both different types. So in the case of the Oxford Dictionary, the key is a string and the value is a string. In this case, we'll define a dictionary with a string and an int. Here we're defining grade categories. Here the angled syntax is really shining. It gets even worse when you have collections inside of collections. For now, let's add a few values. Here we defined a great grade. The value is 100. Let's add a few more. Now let's do the lookup. What we're saying is we want to know what the grade is for a good grade, and this will return an int. And then we're calling the ints to string method, which is defined in the object class, to actually print it on the screen. Save, return back to Unity, run the game, press the button, and you get the value printed to the screen. The last important collection type is a set. A set is a collection of unique objects. In C Sharp, it's known as a hash set. Now let's add some people to it.
this point, we're looping through the set and we're printing out the names. One thing to keep in mind with the set is a set won't keep the same order, so you may see a different result. Also notice we're adding a duplicate. Save, switch back to Unity, run the game. Press the button. The duplicate is gone. Pretty cool. But the power of sets is really working with other sets. You may have seen in social media all these Venn diagram memes. Well, those are basically two sets that are working together. In the case of the memes, the place where the two sets meet is known as the intersection. But keep in mind, a set has lots of other operations as well. For now, let's get the intersection. Save and switch back to Unity, run the game. Press the button. And look at that. Aragorn is the common name between two sets, but you can also see what are the names that aren't common and so forth. Now those are three of the many different collection types you'll be using in C-sharp. These collection types will save you a ton of time in the long term. As you expand your knowledge into algorithms, a good practice is to implement these collection types on your own. This practice really teaches you the language and also teaches you how these collection types work under the covers.